Folks, listen up. Your money is like a wild horse. Without a budget, it'll run away from you. A budget is your financial lifeline. It's the difference between drowning in debt and swimming in savings. Think about it. Would you build a house without a blueprint? Of course not. So why try to build wealth without a budget? It's your roadmap to financial success. It tells your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. A budget isn't a punishment. It's a plan for your money. It's how you take control. The secret? They all started with a budget. It's not about how much you make. It's about how you manage what you make. I've seen folks making six figures living paycheck to paycheck, and I've seen others on modest incomes become millionaires. The difference? A budget. A budget gives you power. It shows you exactly where you stand. No more guessing. With a budget, you're in charge. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you ready to take control of your money? If you're nodding your head, then it's time to start budgeting. It's time to start saving. It's time to change your life. But here's the thing. It won't happen by accident. You've got to make it happen. Imagine never worrying about money again. Imagine having savings for emergencies. Imagine being debt-free. Imagine retiring with dignity. That's what a budget can do for you. But you've got to take that first step. You've got to decide that enough is enough. You've got to decide that you're ready for change. Now I know what some of you are thinking. I've tried budgeting before. It didn't work. Well, let me tell you something. Budgeting is like riding a bike. You might fall off a few times at first, but you keep trying. The key is to start. All right, let's get down to business. The first step in budgeting is tracking your money. You've got to know where your money is going. Every single penny. It's like being a detective. You're following the money trail. And trust me, you might be surprised where it leads. Here's what you do. For one month, write down every expense, everything. That coffee on the way to work, write it down. That subscription you forgot about, write it down. That impulse buy at the checkout, you guessed it, write it down. It might seem tedious, but it's crucial. You can't change what you don't know. And right now, you need to know where your money is going. Now, you might be thinking, I don't have time for this. But let me ask you something. Do you have time to be broke? Do you have time to stress about money? No. Then you've got time to track your expenses. It's that important. And here's the good news. It gets easier. After a while, it becomes second nature. You start to think before you spend. Start today. Now that you've tracked your expenses, it's time to organize them. We're going to categorize your spending. This isn't just busy work, folks. This is how you take control. This is how you start to see patterns. This is how you start to make changes. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to it. Start with the big categories. Housing, transportation, food, utilities. These are your necessities. Then move on to other categories. Entertainment, clothing, personal care. Don't forget about savings and debt payments. The goal here is to see where your money is really going. Is it aligned with your priorities? Is it helping you reach your goals? Or is it holding you back? Now here's where it gets interesting. Look at each category. Are you surprised by anything? Maybe you're spending more on eating out than you realized. Maybe your cable bill is higher than you thought. This is good. This is where the real work begins. This is where you start to make decisions. This is where you start to take control. Remember, the goal isn't to restrict yourself. Section 5. Tech to the Rescue Budgeting Tools and Apps All right, let's talk about technology. Now, I'm an old school guy, but even I can't deny how helpful budgeting tools and apps can be. They can make tracking and categorizing your expenses a whole lot easier. And anything that makes budgeting easier is a win in my book. So let's explore some options. There are plenty of free budgeting apps out there. Mint, Every Dollar, Personal Capital. These apps can link to your bank accounts and credit cards. They can automatically categorize your expenses. They can send you alerts when you're close to your budget limits. It's like having a personal finance assistant in your pocket. And who couldn't use one of those? But here's the thing. These apps are tools. They're not magic. They can't make decisions for you. They can't say no to that impulse purchase. That's still on you. The best budgeting tool is the one you'll actually use. Section 6. Prioritize, saving, pay yourself first. Listen up because this is important. When you're budgeting, you've got to prioritize saving. I call this paying yourself first. It's a simple concept, but it's powerful. Before you pay any bills, before you buy groceries, before you do anything else with your money, you save. You put money aside for your future. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Dave, I can barely make ends meet. How can I save? I hear you. But here's the truth. If you wait until the end of the month to save what's left over, you'll never save. 
there will always be something else to spend money on. That's why you've got to make saving a priority. You've got to treat it like a bill, a bill to your future self. Start small if you have to. Even $10 a week is a start. That's $520 a year. It might not seem like much, but it's a start. And it's more than zero. As you get better at budgeting, as you find ways to cut expenses, you can increase your savings. The key is to start. The key is to make it a habit. The key is to pay yourself first. Section 7. Trim the fat cutting unnecessary expenses. All right, folks, it's time for some tough love. If you want to save more, you've got to spend less. It's that simple. And that means cutting unnecessary expenses. Now, I'm not talking about living like a monk. I'm talking about being intentional with your spending. I'm talking about cutting the fat, not the muscle. Look at your expenses. Really look at them. Are there things you're paying for that you don't need? Maybe it's that gym membership you never use. Maybe it's subscriptions to streaming services you rarely watch. Maybe it's eating out more than you should. These are what I call budget busters. They're the little things that add up over time. And they're holding you back from reaching your financial goals. Now, cutting expenses isn't always easy. It might mean making some tough choices. It might mean saying no to things you want. But remember why you're doing this. Section 8. The 50-30-20 rule, a simple budgeting framework. Now let's talk about a simple budgeting framework. It's called the 50-30-20 rule. It's not perfect for everyone, but it's a good starting point. Here's how it works. You divide your after-tax income into three categories, 50% for needs, 30% for wants, and 20% for savings and debt repayment. Let's break it down. Needs are the things you can't live without. Housing, food, utilities, transportation. These should take up no more than 50% of your income. Wants are the nice-to-haves. Entertainment, dining out, hobbies. These get 30% of your income. The last 20% goes to savings and debt repayment. This includes your emergency fund, retirement savings, and paying off debt. Now this might look different for you. Maybe you live in an expensive city and your needs take up more than 50%, or maybe you're trying to pay off debt quickly so you put more towards that. That's okay. The point isn't to follow this rule exactly. The point is to have a framework. Section 9 Dealing with Debt Budgeting for Freedom Let's talk about the elephant in the room, debt. For many people, it's a huge obstacle to financial freedom. But here's the good news. A good budget can help you tackle your debt. It can help you break free. And trust me, there's no feeling quite like being debt-free. It's like a weight lifted off your shoulders. When you're budgeting to pay off debt, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to treat it like an emergency. Because it is. Debt is stealing from your future. It's keeping you from reaching your goals. So you've got to attack it. You've got to throw everything you can at it. This might mean making some sacrifices in the short term, but it's worth it for the long-term payoff. Here's how you do it. First, list out all your debts, every single one. Write down the balance, the interest rate, and the minimum payment. Then, while you're making minimum payments on everything, throw any extra money at the smallest debt. This is what I call the debt snowball method. You start small, build momentum, and before you know it, you're rolling. Section 10. Staying on track. Monitoring and adjusting your budget. All right, you've set up your budget, you're tracking your expenses, you're cutting unnecessary spending, you're tackling your debt. Great job. But here's the thing. A budget isn't a set it and forget it deal. It's a living document. It needs regular attention. It needs to be monitored and adjusted. Life changes. Your income might go up or down. Your expenses might shift. Maybe you have a baby. Maybe you move to a new city. These changes need to be reflected in your budget. That's why it's important to review your budget regularly. I recommend doing it monthly. Sit down, look at your income and expenses, see how they line up with your budget. Are you on track? Or do you need to make some adjustments? Don't be discouraged if you need to make changes. The goal is to create a budget that works for you. 